Massive shout out to our sponsors, Soakin. You know what it is. For a small monthly subscription fee, you can make unlimited transfers to over 200 countries and territories. You want some of that. You want to save some money. And of course, they've got great initiatives. Also sponsors of AS Monaco, Everton, Fulham and Arsenal. Make sure you get yourself involved. Download the app, Soakin Global, and follow them on socials. Soakin. They can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man stepped in a room with legends Rio and Steve, you know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League He's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is Vibe, vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know this Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another episode of Vibe With Five. You've got here myself, Joel Bayer, Rio Ferdinand, and his younger brother, Mr. Anton Ferdinand. How you doing, man? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Listen, man, it's a pleasure. It's been long overdue. Uh, we've got a show coming out with you and Stephen Housen on the Five channel, right? The Secret Scout partnered up with them make sure you check them out on IG as well but you're going to be looking at young players uh, you were a young player coming through as well so we thought it makes sense to look at your career the achievements uh, some of the things that you wish you had done better some of the things that you want to ed- educate us on and yeah let's just go for it man Rio what did you think of your younger brother seeing him come up because speaking with him he tells me all the time I was better than him man I was better than Rio I was better than Rio coming up did you believe that I wanted that to be the case. It's like when you've got a younger brother, you want your brother, it's like if you've got a kid, you want you always happy to be your kid, to, your, your, your brother to be better than you, your younger sibling. And I was like that. If anybody said to me, I remember when I, I think when you, Anton was about 16, a couple of the coaches said to me at West Ham, because I used to ring them and, and find out how Anton's doing. And they go, you know what? I think it's, it's the pennies dropped with him and I think he's going to be better than you. At this point in his career, at his age, he looks like he's better than you. And he's got a, maybe a higher ceiling than you. So I was like, yeah, I, I was like happy. Like, so I, I wanted him to go and do what I'm doing and, and, and beyond what I'm doing. But there's seven years between us. So I was always the big brother. I was always better at the time because I was older. I was always quicker, stronger at the time until we became adults. But it was, um, no, it was, a, it was a mad journey. But it's always the big brother who's just looking out for hopefully your brother's going to just be right, always going to be looked after, always going to be successful. And hopefully follow in your footsteps and do what you're doing. Anton, you've told me the story a few times and I want the viewers to hear. When you used to play in the back garden with your mate and Rio was in goal, what would happen? Hmm, yeah, so when I used to play with Osman, who was my, my best friend growing up on the estate, um, a Turkish boy named Osman, we used to play 1v1 and Rio would be in goal. <laughs> I'd win. I'd be winning, go 1-0 up, 2-0 up. And all of a sudden Rio would be like Peter Schmeichel. Anytime I took a shot, bang, save, save. But then he'd let Osman score two, let Osman score three. Osman's winning and I'm cussing. Rio, why are you doing this for? Like, why are you, why are you saving all my shots but you don't save Osman? It's a liberty. And he began, shut up, shut up, win. You got to win, you got to win. You know, and, and I used to cry. You used to run upstairs. You used sometimes. to run upstairs and cry used to, like a baby. Um, but as I got older, I understood why he done it. He was it was building resilience within me to understand you got to work harder than the person you're playing against to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. And but at the time, I didn't see it as that. So as my big brother's not helping me, my big brother's a hindrance. My, why is my big brother doing this? Why is my big brother doing that? You know, and and that's what it was. Man, so you're growing up. Was it for resilience, or were you just being spiteful? No, I just wanted him to be better. And um, he was he was a bit quicker than his friend, but his friend had good skills. So I knew he had to defend well. And the, he, it was a good battle. But I don't know, I just didn't, I, I just didn't, I didn't think it should be easy for you to win. I wanted to make it harder. I grew up, didn't play football with my dad, but I used to play cards and little games and I play other sports with my dad and he'd never let me win. Never, ever, ever, ever. Did you have the same experience being baby baby bro? Yeah, but I got it from, got it with Rio. Like, I was too young. When I got older, dad, as I got older, dad was past it in terms of sprinting. Like, dad was quick. I remember you and dad used to race all the time, wouldn't let you win. Or you'd play tennis up against the wall, wouldn't let you win. I remember watching it, but the grounding that daddy gave you, 
you started to give to me because dad stopped playing. He weren't, he weren't as agile mm. to, to play and he weren't as quick. So I think at a younger age, I was probably around the same pace as him. And probably for my dad, he, he, he wouldn't have wanted that. Yeah, yeah. He's but it, it's it's it. weird because I, I never spoke about this with my dad as well. That's why I always believe in like kids seeing stuff and habits and seeing that cons consistently it, it breeds better behavior if you're doing the right things and so that's why i've done that with anton and it's it's all part of it like it hardens them and it, it makes them better makes them more aggressive makes them want to work at things and and if it doesn't come easy you appreciate it a bit more i think and boy was he gonna need it you know growing up um now, you're playing for your local team. What was the local team before you got scouted for West Ham? Athenley. I played for Athenley, which was the top of Peckham Rye. Really? Park. Yeah, and how did that happen? Team. What was the process from there to... I'll West tell you Ham? how that happened. Sorry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so when, it, when he was young, yeah, he was too young to play in a tournament for Athenley. But we used to, used to have a seven-a-side tournament, famous around South London, was the best tournament. Seven-a-side tournament. And we used to go there. They, did, they said to him he could play but for a, t a team two years older than him it was, he was little, like seven years old or something like that. Come on, rattled the bar. Did you score? I can't remember. You I can't remember. Come on, I just, just they took the game and, and everyone just they went, whoa, what is this? Because he was mad fast. Really? Where, where did he play though? What position? He was playing up front, like, like attacking, attacking, yeah. And then, then all of a sudden, then scouts just came over and was asking my dad, like, can we take him? Paul Elliott, the old player, was, a, was he had an academy yeah, that used to feed Elliott, Chelsea, yeah. I think. He come over, oh, who's this boy? Can we take him? And then he, at the time, they had another game to play. I think it was like in the semi-final or final when they had to play. And he said, no, no, I've got a billiard. Got a bit. He got nervous because <laughs> everyone was there and everyone was hyping. It was like mad hype. Did you, is, can you confirm this though? Were you, were you like? Yeah, I had that in me. I had, I had that in me until, probably until I, tu until I turned 16, I had that in me that when the pressure was on me, Sometimes it, I would wouldn't feel right, and I would make it. No, no, I got a bellyache. To 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 my nearest and dearest, I'd never say it out, but I'd say to Rio, or I'd say to to my dad, I don't feel well, or I'd say to Gavin, I can't do that run. I feel sick. Gavin, who is Rio? Ga yeah, best Gavin friend. Rose. I'd mm -hmm. say like we'll be doing running around the, the adventure playground, and I, I can't do that, Gavin. I feel sick. I mm -hmm. feel sick. So you're at West Ham Academy, obviously from a young boy's age. When it starts to get competitive, when do you start to feel that, you know what, yeah, I'm actually the best here? And also, let's be honest, are you thinking you're getting through because of your older brother at the same time? I never ever felt, I never ever thought like that, if I'm honest. I never thought, oh, I'm getting through because of Rio. Um, I think, did I sign for West Ham? I was at West Ham, I think, a month before you. I was nine, you was 14, innit? Hmm. Yeah, so I think I think I might have gone to the Centre of Excellence. I think a month or so before you went Cause to Because I was at other clubs. Because you was yeah, you was uh, Middlesbrough, mm. um, and a few others. Mm. Norwich. No, yeah. So I was there a little bit. So I never ever felt I was at West Ham because of Rio. Um, but I knew I was good. I always knew I was good, and that transpired even as I got older. I always knew I was a good player, <laughs> and. The three players that were spoken about in the academy, in the Centre of Excellence at West Ham, the Centre of Excellence was South London one, which was in Beckenham, was me, Kieran Richardson and Ben Watson. Oh, really? All three of us went on to have careers. Yeah. We were the ones that were spoken about, but only me and Kieran was the ones who got fast-tracked from our Centre of Excellence in Beckenham to Chadwell Heath. Me and Kieran played two years up to get into the... Into the um, into the academy into the the academy at West Ham, and we were spoke. So I always knew I was good. Always knew. And when we look at South London around my age group, me, Kieran, Cherno, Samba, Goma, champion championship manager. Legend. We've, <laughs> we were always mm. spoken about mm. South London. These boys are the these boys are the one. So always. So when it gets to that you know, that age where you're getting your, your, your pros and stuff like that. What are you feeling? Are you thinking I'm definitely going to get one? Have you been told you're going to get one? Are you... Just before that, though, what, yeah. what, just, what was it like being the younger brother of someone who's made it at that club? Was there any more pressure? Did you feel pressure? 
Yeah, I, I felt pressure. 100% I felt pressure because it's not like I'm following the footsteps of someone who's an average, bang average player. I'm following someone who... What we see today in a, in a centre-back is modern, modernised on you. Do you know what I mean? The, the centre-back that we see today is Rio Ferdinand. What we want to see in a centre-back today is Rio Ferdinand. The ones you get spoken about as being the best in the world, they're modelled on you. So I'm following that, but it's not... It's my brother. It's not yes. just somebody... It's not a stranger. It's my brother. Plus, you're my idol... And it's like, that that takes it to another level. Because I'm looking at a guy and that's my idol, but I'm, my idol's my brother. I can't let him down. I can't let the family down. So I always had that and I always said that to myself. I didn't mind pressure, but I felt pressure. Oh, I felt it, but I didn't mind it. Like, I would go out, before I got out in the game, I'd look at my name, look at Ferdinand, and I'd go, I can't let the name down. I can't do it. I always spoke like that because I'd always had that pressure. So I took that with me on my journey, you know, and it was like at West Ham, and to be fair, fair play to West Ham, the coaches never, ever put that pressure on me. They always allowed me to develop. And I always say this, having you as a brother was a burden, but it was a blessing as well in football because I got my YTS based on you. I was going through a growth spurt. I was like Bambi on the ice. I couldn't kick a ball properly. I couldn't move my transitional, my, the way I ran wasn't good. But I still got a YTS because they saw you come out of a growth, a growth spurt. spurt and saw the next stage of yourself and they wanted to see me go through that. Mm. And so that was a blessing of having you as my brother because I don't. if you weren't there, I wouldn't have got a YTS. Yes. Yeah, a lot of kids get lost because of that reason. They have a growth spurt and the Cubs don't appreciate that once, what are they going to look like after? They don't have that patience or that time to give them so they can prove that actually it's just a, a, a little time in, in this growth that I'm going through that I can get through it and become a better player at the end of because, it. Because just to add to that, what people don't understand and for people listening is just a simple thing as when the ball goes at your feet to strike it, you're used to having a certain le length in your leg, which you know without thinking to just do it. Now that all of a sudden that, that length in your leg's longer, but your time and everything is still of the leg that's shorter, because that's what you know naturally. It's, yeah, it's, it's like it's like the only best way to put it as well is like a, it's like a golfer who's got a golf club exactly how that suits him for uh, in terms of length. Going back to the golf driving range and just changing that club for a different length. Wow, mm -hmm. and then yeah. it, it, it just throws you Push straight you off. out. Yeah. Push you off. Uh, what about sorry? What about so when you was playing in them young games when you was a young kid coming up? What because I remember you spoken about this just for everyone to hear. The, what was the, the comments and stuff outside of on around the pitch from like parents and people watching? Yeah, so I would I remember it so vividly, playing games, and there's too many times to to mention a, a, a specific club I was playing against. But a ball would go off the pitch, I'd run to go and get the ball to take a throw in. I'd hear parents on the other side, parents of players that I played with saying, I, he's only here because of Rio. He's only playing because he'll never be as good as Rio. He's rubbish, he'll never be as good as Rio. I don't even know why he's playing. So you can I hear I used this. to hear all this. I used to hear all it's that. Hard, that, isn't it, to that. I used to hear, and I heard that from nine years old. I used to hear that. Wow. When I was in Peckham, I never heard that because... People never in Peckham, they didn't compare us. Mm. The different we were ages. We were as seven, well, seven years, years apart. Mm. Never compared us. If anything, you said, I think what's interesting is you were talking about the Ferdinand name. Did that keep you out of trouble or with your friends or, you know, what were, because you spoke about the influence of your friends as well. How did it impact having the Ferdinand name? Yeah, it, it, was, it was massive. I know, I knew that. I couldn't get into no stupidness because if I did, it would affect him. In the papers? Yeah. I knew it affected him. So I had I had a responsibility to make sure that if anything, if his if his career didn't go where it needed to because stuff happened off off the pitch, it wasn't because of me. I had a responsibility. And I knew that from a young age. And my friends knew that who I grew up with. You know, and they'd done that because they respected him, they respected Rio. Mm -hmm. Look, Rob. Rio's flying the flag, flag for us. Mm. And they knew that and they respected that. But that was passed down from Rio's friends to my friends. You know what I mean? Mm. Rio, Rio's representing us. 
You can't go, you gotta you go home. Exactly. Mm. But my friends would do, some of my friends would go and do stupidness, but they would say to me, Anton, it's time to go. Mm. You're not getting involved, it's time to go. F- football is a savior for a lot of players that come out from the backgrounds that are similar to ours. Mm. Football is, that's, is the savior. Like football protects you. A lot of your friends, well, a lot of people know and love football. And so when there is a bit of trouble, they would like, listen, this, this, isn't, this isn't the time you need to be here. Because they know you've got something that could end up getting you out of this mm-hmm. environment. Mm-hmm. So they protect you. Or even where, like, nah, he's all right, man. He's all right. He plays football. He, he plays, he, the other way he plays football. Do you know what I mean? So you just get, you get yeah, given yeah, a blow. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You can even get past the, you don't have to join gangs yeah, there's or no friction. whatever it is. Yeah, it's cool. Um, before we talk about his professional career, uh, when you would... Did you ever call up to see if Anton's behaving well? Would, if you heard anything, what was your reaction at? Like? Because I heard you was you was difficult back then. You know, if you heard anything, what was the attitude? Yeah, I would ring you. I'd say I'd say to him, I heard you're not training right, or like, why why was you this, or why what, what's going on here? Like, and less so as we got older, because you you're both focused on your own careers, and you're, he's like he's a big man, he's doing his own thing. But still from afar. But when he was younger, I was I always spoke to coaches. There's a guy called Paul Heffer. Remember Paul? Yeah. Tony Carr, the youth team manager. Paul Heffer's still at West Ham now. Tony Carr's got a book out actually now. Tony Carr, he, he dealt with a lot of the best young players that came through. But I would always ask the question, like, how's, how's my brother doing? And, they, and, they, and they'd just tell me. And either I would speak to Anton or I'd tell my dad. Mm-hmm. Are you watching his youth games or his, his games? No, I couldn't really get to your games because yeah. I, I was playing. Yeah. So, But I would always be finding out from either my dad or my friends, because my friends will go and watch Anton, mm-hmm. like Gavin and people like that would go and watch him. So I'd get a good understanding as to where he is okay. and how he's doing. Professional debut handed by Glenn Roder, uh, a 2-1 victory against Preston North End. Talk to us, man. What's the feeling? Hmm. That, the pressure that I felt that day. You was at the, Remember, you come to the game, you knew I was playing. I played all pre-season. I'd just given, my, that, you know, just, I'd just given myself... Yeah a chance to be in that team because I'd played the whole of pre-season. Um, it was like our Glen Roder's project because he liked players who had composure. He was a centre-back who had a step over in him, you know. But before I go on, obviously, um, he's no longer with us and he's someone who I have to pay homage to because he gave me my career. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, but he was someone who had a step over in him he didn't just kick the ball. He looked for a pass. His clearances were passes. He was that type of defender. And he saw, I think he saw, obviously Rio had already gone. So who's the next one who's like that? Oh, it's Anton. Oh, it's Rio. But okay. It was like I was a project to him. But you weren't a centre-back back then though, were you? Were you I, played, I, my I, first, was. I was by then, but, okay. I, but my first two months in the youth team, I played centre midfield. Okay. Because we had signed five centre-backs. Okay. But because I could play other positions, they didn't mind signing me as well. And I was the only one, no, there's two of us who didn't have pro contracts, all the others had pro contracts. So it wasn't until I went in, one of the under 19 players got injured, centre backs got injured. The centre back from the 17s went up and played in, in there, and I played centre back for the 17s. I remember like, I played against Watford, I played against Ashley Young at Watford, and I played centre back for the first time. and. I knew that was my chance to show Peter Braybrook how good I, that this is where I want to play because I was like full fifth in the pecking order to play at centre back mm-hmm. at this time at 16 years old, and I remember I just smashed it up, man. And I played two games at centre back the following week, and then Peter Braybrook said to Tony Carr, "I don't know, I care who's playing in the night centre back, you got to take Anton. It's too easy for him down here." Wow. And that was the start of my journey as, as a proper centre back. So, did you struggle in the Premier League when you started? No, I didn't struggle in the Premier League. Not especially not in my first year, and uh, I, I say it's it's hard for me because I get a lot of um, people chatting. Oh, you only play because of Rio. You only played in the Premier League because of Rio. This that uh, people that are playing in the in the Premier League now weren't doing what I was doing when I first come into the Premier League. I hands down, I say that confidently. I, I give it. Let's run through one or two players. Even at Arsenal, let's just say, no disrespect, by the way, but when you look at someone like a Ben White, I, I listen. I, I, at nineteen, coming in my first year in the Premier League, mm. I don't. I wouldn't say there was a centre back 
that's playing now that was people look at and, 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 and I can say, rah, like, they're doing more than what you were doing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't say that. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's my, the on, my honest truth. I, you might think differently, Rhi, I don't know, but that's my honest truth. I don't think there's a, there's a centre back out there now. So I, I just look at it with your career. I don't think you forgot, was able to fulfil all your potential. I always say this, like, I, I think you should have had 50 caps for England. Like, because uh, when you look at this, the time when you was playing, players like, I don't know, and this is no disrespect to them players, like, they're all good, solid players. But like, Matt Upson, um, Gary Cahill, I think Dawson, Zach, it, Dawson I think Zach Knight got a, uh, an England cap as well. Like, all those players, if you're just putting it down to ability, I don't think they're on the same page as Anton at all. But there's so many other things that go towards becoming a player and playing and getting an opportunity at that level. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it that if one part there's a there's a shift or it doesn't it's, it's, it doesn't work over there, it can affect the dynamic and affect what go, happens on. And obviously going to um, uh, going into like when you're playing as a young player. It's like the first season, we spoke about this a lot. When his first season goes in, smashes it. 26, he's yeah. featured 26 games that season yeah, at 19 years old. And you're thinking, I'm thinking, right, he's going Arsenal or something. Yeah. yeah. Straight away. <laughs> yeah. Second season syndrome's hard, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what I tried to say to Anton, because I, I, when I first went in, no one knew who I was. Easy, first season. Mm-hmm. Second season, people are ready and waiting now, and it's hard. And then obviously you've got to build and bring new things to your game, and it's harder, man. Mm. But... That was, that was my downfall. That my second season was my downfall. Um, and before I say what I think, it, or what I know it is, why do you think I didn't fulfil my potential? I would say... So it's different... At that point... I think it's different to what I'd say later in your career. I think there was f- events that happened in your career that affected it, like going to Turkey and the situation with John Terry, 100% had a big play on the, on your career at the top level. But I would say your application and the way you approached big games was very different to the way you approached games against the mediocre team. So Anton playing against Man United, I always knew Anton would play well. Anton against Arsenal, I'd get a report back. Anton was unbelievable against Arsenal. Liverpool, all the big teams, Anton play well. Then I'd watch and I'd see, or I'd f- ask about, oh, Bolton away. Not meant to be a great team. Anton, I know Anton didn't approach them games with the intensity that he approached the big games. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, you're right. That, that was, I don't know, when I stood up and I stood in the tunnel and Thierry's standing there, I'm like, it's it's not a game that you you have to get up for. You're playing against Thierry Henry. There's not much more that can be said. Or standing in a tunnel, I'm standing next to you, Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney, uh, Van, um, Van Nistelrooy, Van Persie. You know, John Terry. I'm standing next to these players. Ledley King, who play in my position. And in my head, I'm standing in the tunnel. I'm going, I'm the best centre back out there. Whether you was in the tunnel mm. or not. That's how I was focused. I'm, I'm going to show people I'm the best centre-back on the pitch today. And the player I'm playing against, Thierry Henry, he ain't going to get a kick. And you were fast. You had events. I remember yeah. that game against Thierry where you gave him a little bit of a, a hard time. He shook your hand afterwards yeah. and he had one or two yeah. nice things to say. Yeah, he, 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 I asked for his shirt um, and he, he said, yeah, but he said, as long as you give me yours. And I was like, well, you want my, you want my shirt? I was <laughs> like, bruh. What's that walk like when you yeah, talk to the boys I'm, then? I'm telling you, I... <laughs> I remember after him saying that to me, I was walking to go and clap the fans because we, we beat um, Arsenal 3-2. I remember. <laughs> the, last, the, last, <laughs> the last team to win at Highbury, 3-2. Your team. Yeah. And um, I remember walking towards the, uh, the, the away fans, the, the West Ham fans, with Swagger going to Marlon Harewood and, and Nigeria Coco, right? Does Terry want your shirt? He, <laughs> he wants mine, bro. He wants yours. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, it was... It was unbelievable. Do you, do you think that though? Do you, would you put it down to that? There's, there's, there's two things. There's, there's that 100%. My application in, in against the lesser teams weren't 
as intensified as it was when I played the big teams. That's 100%. But I think the biggest thing for, for me was where you was on such a pedestal to me and where people had always said, you're only playing because you're your brother, you're not as good as your brother. That first year took me out of your shadow. First time I've ever been out of your shadow. First time I'd go in a place and people would go, there's Anton, Anton. Ferdinand. Not, there's Rio's brother. Mm. It was the first time ever. And we see when that happened, it's almost like I realized, oh, I've done it. The biggest thing that I could achieve, I'd achieved it. Mm. You know, I wanted to play for England. I should have played for England. I played for my boyhood club. I was playing for my boyhood club, West Ham. I'd achieved these, I'd achieved playing for under 21, but I wanted to get in England. But the biggest accolade for me was Anton Ferdinand, not Rio's brother, because that's all I was known as, Rio's Even brother. Even when you introduced him today, Rio's brother, you said, didn't it? I get all brother. Yeah, he's a younger, younger brother. Mm. I say it because I just love the brotherhood, innit? And I know how much he looks up to you. We talk all the time off camera. Mm -hmm. I know he is his own man, but we can't help but... Mm. Our, a lot of our conversations... I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just yeah, saying yeah, yeah. it's natural to say yeah, that. Yeah, of course. But I know the effect it had on it's Anton. Had on so Anton. It, sometimes it makes me feel awkward when people do yeah, introduce him yeah. like that. Because I'm sure you lot have had his chat. I want to take it back to OT, when you find out that you're in a team sheet. Oh, yeah. Please, talk <laughs> us through that, man. Yeah, it was the first time I was ever on the bench for West Ham. And I remember you was injured at the time, weren't you? And I remember... Going out onto the pitch, look at the pitch. I just wanted to get on the pitch at Old Trafford. Theatre of dreams. Like, and I remember walking down the ramp and then walking up it. Obviously, I was lucky enough that I'd been there before because Rio was playing there. But now it was just different because I'm going there as a player in my own right. I'm not going there as a family member to a Manchester United player. I'm in my own right. Mm. You know what I mean? And so I I'm guessing the whole family's there. Like... In no, general. it wasn't no, even no, that. Because no. I, I, I didn't know I didn't know I was on the bench. I didn't know I was gonna be wow. it's just I was just travelling. And previously I'd just travelled, done the warm up and got changed. I was never on the bench. Mm -hmm. So family didn't even come because it was like, I'm just, there's no point travelling up to Manchester. Rio's not play, if Rio's playing, cool, but Rio weren't playing, he was injured. I'm not gonna be on the bench, so there's no point coming. Like it's it's a waste of money, basically. Yeah. And I remember going on the pitch, I'm looking at the stand like wow. Like the stand just hit me different because now I'm going walking out there as a player, and that big stand looking at me, and I'm like, wow, this is what I, this is what I worked for. This, and I remember walking, looking at the pitch, and Sebastian Schemmel, the right back from West Ham, come out. He went, Anton, you're on the bench. I went, shut up, no, I'm not. He went, oh, you're on the bench. He said, Anton, if we're winning, which is unlikely, <laughs> yeah. Did he say I'm that? coming over and I'm saying, telling them, Gaffer, I'm coming off, I'm coming off for Anton. you got to play today if we're winning. You have to play. And I went, I don't believe you, shut up. And he went, go and look for yourself, go and look. So I said, okay, so I had a little jog in, walked up the, walked up the, the ramp and then into the, the little corridor where the change rooms are at Old Trafford. And you were standing next to um, Sir Alex Ferguson near his office, because his office was in, on the left in between the two mm. changing rooms. And I saw you and I said, Ria, I'll be back in a minute, I just want to check something, I'll be back in a minute. I walked in, I see my name on the, the subs list, and I couldn't wait to tell Rio. The first person I wanted to tell was Rio, I couldn't wait for it. It was like, I need to tell Rio, I need to tell Rio. Yeah. I walked out of the, the, um, the changing room, and I forgot Sir Alex Ferguson was there, because so, I was so gassed that I was on the bench, yeah. and I couldn't wait to tell Rio. I went, bruv, I'm on that bench, bruv, I'm on that bench. And then I remember, and I went, oh, like, so, sorry, sir, so, so, so. and he was laughing and you were laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, and that was the start of my journey. Like, mm. it was like, I remember you saying, oh, well done, go and get, like, go and get prepared. Go and get ready, yeah. Like, and it was like, so again, it was another teaching. It wasn't like, I knew he was happy, happy for me, but it was like, okay, you got a job to do. Go and get changed. Go and get changed. Cool. Go and get changed. You know? it's, it's weird because I never get hyped over nothing. Really? Not not nothing. I get hyped, but I don't ever show really. The only time you used to see me is on the pitch, hyped. Like if we scored, I was always first there. Mm -hmm. But stuff outside, like inside, I'm bursting with pride and joy that my brother is on the bench at Old Trafford. The only thing I'm getting about is I'm not going to be involved to be to be a part of it with him. But like I'm ringing everyone. Anton's on the bench. He's on the bench. Right? Oh really? But like. 
I don't. Yeah, because you seem very. I just don't show it. Yeah, I, just don't, I just never done that because I always never want to get too ahead of myself that something's going to come back and bite you on the ass. Mm-hmm. So that's the way I was with reacting with Anton. I went to watch his first game against Preston. Him just saying that reminded me, and I remember the whole journey there. Nervous, never been so nervous in my life. Watching you, him, you and it's like. Anything. No, no, I was just like, but I'm sitting there. Everyone exterior would go. He looks just calm, like any other day. But inside, I'm like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Like so. Well, that's to say that's, that goes both ways. I never got nervous playing unless it was big, big games. Never got nervous. But when I went to go watch Rio, even though I knew he was the best, I always had the maddest nerves. Mm-hmm. The maddest nerves that I had. Mm-hmm. It's like because I weren't in control. Mm-hmm. But how can I have, how can I have nerves when I'm going to watch the best? Hmm. But it's just that brotherly yeah, you, feeling, care, that, care. The, yeah. exactly that. So, so, so fast forward to to you flying at West Ham, um, playing really well. What was it like when, for you? I know it was like for me, but when we used to play against each other. Ooh. you know what? It was the whole week, the whole week. You would know if we were playing against each other because we never spoke. Yeah. The week leading up to the game, the competitive edge would would kick in. The competitive, really? we didn't speak. We did not speak the whole no. week. There's no texts and no phone calls. Wait, wait. Nothing. At, at this time, he's not little bro bro anymore now. Now he's, he's become an opposition, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like, it was like treating him like everyone else. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Serious. Because I was like, can't let him get bragging rights. Like, it was like, then there was no chatting. There was none. And the very first time, so the week before we played, you were playing in London that to come to the Four hotel. Seasons Hotel yeah. to do a photo shoot for the for the um, front of the programme for West Ham. Mm. And, that, and that was the last time we spoke, was in the lobby. What's that conversation like? Because we all know no, something's going on next week, isn't it? So. No, because he was concentrating on the game that he was playing, so oh, we okay. didn't speak about the game. Mm-hmm. It was just, mm-hmm. okay, got you. like, you got the game tomorrow, whatever, and we spoke about general stuff. Then that game finishes, and there's no chat. And it was weird for me, because I'm used to chatting to him regularly, like, and it was just weird for me. But... I'm learning from him. So it's like, well, I'm not ringing him either. Yeah. I'm not texting him either. <laughs> right, okay, this is this, it's competitive. I'm getting paid to do this. He's getting paid. It's competitive. It's work. And I remember the day come we're playing. Obviously, all our families there. We've got shirts made for them. Remember, one yeah. half West Ham, one half uh, oh, United right. for like, our, our siblings. Yeah, yeah. And all of our families in, in the box at West Ham, and still no chat, nothing. And Did you, you was that first game. No, you won it. It was the the day that George Best, the day that George oh, Best yeah, died. Yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. And you was in the tunnel just f- before waiting to go. You was doing kick ups in the tunnel. Um, yeah, I, I, but yeah, you was some, you playing with someone in the tunnel, and we was coming out to go past you to go thing. And I was thinking, oh, I'm not chatting to him. I'm not chatting. I'm not chatting to him. And I went out, walked past you, went out, but deep down I was thinking, rah, say, say hello, like say hello. I'm not gonna be the one that says it, you're gonna be the one to say it, not me. We go out, no chat. We go in the tunnel, we go in, get ready, we're in a tunnel, ready at Upton Park to go out. We're standing side by side. Yeah. Rio jumps the line, I'm not looking at each other, just focused. I'm thinking, rah, okay, I'm gonna be the best defender out there. I'm playing against Rio, but I'm, I'm the best. I'm the best. And I'm playing against Van Nistelrooy. I'm playing against Rooney. They ain't getting a kick. It's not happening. We get out. As we both, like, I've done what he done. He jumped the line. I jumped the line. It was, like, simultaneous. It was mad, innit? Like, yeah. still not thinking nothing of it. And I'm going, I'm still not chatting to him. Then You know, you do the, the, the respect, handshake. the handshake. When we come to hand, we just both started laughing. Mm. Just both started bending up. Like, and it was like, and it was like, a, for me, that was like a re- relaxation. Okay, cool. Mm. I'm all right now. We've acknowledged each other. Cool. Mm. And then we went 1-0 up, early doors, Marlon Harewood. I remember running past you going, have that, re have that. Yeah. Have that. <laughs> have that. <I> Pissed. <laughs> I remember that. I went cold. When he scored, mm. I went cold. It's like, Rob, we've scored against Manchester United. Mm. Wow. Mm. Scored against Rio Lowe. See later. Rio, have yeah. that. I have that, I have that. And I remember, <laughs> I remember, then you went on to win the game and you was cool because you won the game. Was happy to speak to me after. 
And I remember after the game, yeah, we walked off the pitch together. Yeah, and I remember the first thing. I didn't care that we. I didn't care that we lost. I remember. I said, cause remember, I, I bent up um, Ruth Van Nistelrooy in the box. The ball come out. Mm. I went. He was coming onto it to shoot, and I chopped him in the box. Mm. And I went to our country. I went. The first thing I said, Rob Reed, did you see that chop? Yeah. Where was he going? Where was Ruth going? Mm. Where was he going? Mad. And that picture when we're laughing, that's what we're talking about. Mm. There's a picture of it. And I'm thinking, bruv, you lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, but that's how I used to think. Yeah, when yeah. When I was yeah. young as well. Uh, but, but we played against each other again, yeah. and they got the better of us at Upton Park. So I scored, mind, didn't it? Yeah, I he scored. scored as well. So bearing in mind, like after a game, you normally have a bit of time, get out of the showers, go up to the box, meet your friends and family. Mm. We had a box of about, I don't know, 30 odd people with our friends and family there. Mm. And normally I'd go up and meet them and say hello and whatnot because I wouldn't have seen them for a while being in Manchester. But we lost and he scored. Well, I got straight on that bus. <laughs> I was waiting there for 20 minutes. I'm in the stadium and I can see them all ringing me, texting me, where are you? We're in the box. I'm just blanking it. He was cold, phone down cold yeah. high. I heard you mashed up the, the water dispenser or something like that. Was yeah, it that game? The, when you yeah. walked in. The, the <laughs> yeah, I, I kicked up the whole place. But, like, but I was thinking, I can't go upstairs and see this guy's yeah. face because he can't control it the way he is. Like, I can a bit, yeah, yeah, but this guy, I know, and I know when he's trying to control it, but it's there waiting yeah, to come yeah. out and smile <laughs> and all that shit. There's no way I was going up to that change room, I mean, up to that box, and letting him sit there and, <laughs> and gloat and all this. He might not have said nothing directly to me, but I would have seen him just go, oh, yeah. it'd kill me. Oh, man. I couldn't let, I could, I, and my dad said, you can't be like that, man. Mm. you got to come up and see people and blah, blah, blah. So mm. I don't think I even spoke to my dad till the Monday. That game was on really? a Saturday. Yeah. Didn't answer no calls. My dad said, yeah. well, and my dad rang me or something laughing. Where you been? What's wrong <laughs> with you? Why are you taking it like that? Why are you, uh, <laughs> And I was almost going to just put the phone down and thinking, don't, well, I don't know why you're laughing. Yeah. Mad. But that's dad, so you can't, you know Yeah, I mean? exactly. Um, I was going to say... So my light just come on there. Go I was going to say, you've got some records, man. We spoke about uh, the Premier League Player of the Month award can you shed the light on that stat please yeah so there's now there's 14 and there's only 14 center backs who have um won premier league player of the month is it only 14 center backs since they've been doing it it's a good uh, quiz question by the way mm -hmm. um yeah there's only 14 that's that's done it and to be one of them yeah but always spoken about are oh, you only played in the premier league because of your brother mm-hmm but to have that accolade, that's a personal accolade because people voted that I was the best player for that month. Yeah. You know, I think it was January, um, January 2006, I mm -hmm. think it was. Mm -hmm. Are there any brothers that have ever done that? Did Phil and Gary do that? I don't, I'm not sure. I don't no, they didn't. didn't. <laughs> Phil and Gary ain't done that. <laughs> Phil and Gary ain't done that. Um, I want to also, so we've spoken about the positives, obviously you breaking through at West Ham. Mm. First of all, we want to look at England, what happened there, uh, and then secondly, where it started going a bit sour at West Ham as well. Um, I think for me, the the after the the FA Cup um, final where we lost and I missed a penalty. What was that like? Just tell us what that was like. That was surreal, man. I mean, that's the only trophy that's not in our family collection. Hmm. You've won everything bar that. I was seconds away from being the one that said, okay, you've got every, but I've got the FA Cup. Hmm. What was that feeling like when you lost, lost? I was there, I was gutted. I was like, I just wanted the ground to open me, open up and just swallow me. I didn't want to be on the pitch. I didn't want no part of it. Um, and to be the one who, who missed and for the club you support, you know, and I remember it like it was yesterday, like, and I still wake up now sometimes thinking, oh, how, why did I, how did I miss that? Mm. I still wake up now. Mm. Year, how I remember many years that is, what is it, 17, 18 years on? And it's like, I would, um, I remember no one wanted the fifth penalty. So the, the four people would gone up and say, I'll have one, I'll have one. Mm. And there was one more to go and nobody wanted it. So I just said to the talent party, I said, I'll have it. Mm. I just put myself where I said, I'll have it. Mm. Because I, I didn't want to take a penalty, but if no one wants it, I'll put myself forward, I'll have it. Mm. And what, what will be, will be. And I, but I never thought I was going to miss. I was confident I was going to score. And I had my place, knew where I wanted to put it. Been playing in front of 100, playing for 120 minutes in front of 
I think it was 85 to 90,000 people at Cardiff. So the atmosphere, the noise was unbelievable. And when I put the ball down to take the penalty, it was utter silence. And you know the um, Nokia uh, ringtone? Yeah, that one. Yeah, I just heard that. And it just threw me. I was like, "Raw, what am I doing?" So you're blaming the miss on the, the no, knocker. No, take <laughs> but, blame. Come on, man. but that's like it threw me. I was like, mm. "I forgot what I was doing. Where am I going?" Like it just threw me, mm. you know. Um, and I, and I missed it. And obviously they won the penalty. They won the, the FA Cup because I missed. I was the last one taken. We missed it. And it was like it was just, it was dreadful, man. And then. I think a day after the the pre, prelim squad for was it Germany 2006 mm. for England Sven Goranson had, had done the prelim squad and I was I thought I was going to be in it but I wasn't and I I was playing the last four months of the the season with with a hernia with a hernia mm-hmm. so the morning of the FA Cup final I couldn't sit up and get out of bed I had to roll out of bed it took me like half hour to get out of bed because the hernia was hurting that much mm. and. Because I weren't in the in the prelim squad, I went and had my hernia operation, being, so I was ready for pre-season yeah. um, the, the, the following season. And then I think Luke Young got injured or someone got injured and Sven Goran Eriksson rang me to come and meet up with the squad. And I was like, I just had an operation. And he was like, instead of saying, okay, no problem, we'll move on. He wanted me in there. He was like, okay, well, I want you there. So... I'll get the doctors at England, speak to the doctors at um, West Ham and we'll see if we can wow. wait for you to come. And I was like, okay, great. So I was trying everything to get um, to get fit because I knew how big of achievement and I knew how much it would have meant to our mum, our dad, our granddad, mm. who was so proud of, of us both. But like for to see me and Rio play in an England shirt together, I knew that was riding on me. And it was like, I knew how proud they would have been that we had achieved that. So I was trying everything to get fit. And then the, the, the news come that I, I weren't going to make it. Sven Gorn Eriksson rang me and just said, Anton, um, please, it, it's too late. We, we're not going to be, do, we're not going to be able to get you, fit you in. And he just apologised, said, um, but I want to apologise because I should have put you in the squad from the start. Because wow. I know if you would have been in the squad, you would have made the 23. Mm. And when he said that to me, I just said, okay, thank it's you. It's even worse, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I said, okay, thank you. I put the phone down and I cried my eyes out, man. Mm. Because I knew that was the the chance to to make my mum, my dad, my granddad hap- like, happy and proud that me and Rio were playing for England to get a winning England squad together. Mm-hmm. And I knew the onus was on me to do that because he had already done it. Yeah. So I cried and, and that was probably the worst in terms of footballing, fo- the footballing side of me, the worst time of my life, you know, um, losing the Africa final and not making the, the World Cup squad. And I knew how close I was. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact, if I would have made that England squad, Big move. My my, my fortune in your career. My, my career would have been different. No disrespect to Sunderland. I love my time at Sunderland. I want to sign for for Sunderland. I would have been going to an Arsenal. I would have got the moves that Dawson got, that KO got. I would have got them. Mm. And then them them players, no disrespect to them, they would have stayed behind me. Mm. They wouldn't have gone ahead of me in terms of the England pecking order. No chance. I think that that leaves us in a good place. Obviously we focused on the young part of your career because of the Secret Scout show and it's based on young players coming up, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, you know, etc. And that's why we thought you were the best host to do so with Housen, who's not with us today um, due to his operation. But we will have a part two to carry on uh, looking at your career because it's so interesting and I love seeing you two together on the Fire platform. There's nothing better than that. Anton, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, well done with the series, man. Yeah, man. Really good thank insight. You, yeah. yeah? Thank it. you. No. Guys, we'll all be back for a part two. Don't worry. Please make sure that you leave your comments, like, share. Uh, we really enjoyed this one and I hope you guys too as well. Cheers. By the way, Roy, Roy Keane signed you for Sunderland, didn't he? Yeah, Roy Keane. That'll be in part two, guys. Oh, yeah. Be ready for that. Oh, yeah. Big stuff. Yeah, bit. Prince, let's go. Cool. Huh.
household name. Got a big it up, bros from Peckham. There in the east side of the hammers. All made a name for himself in the setting. Big shoes to fill with his big bro, sick though. Over 200 in a div though. That's appearances, big achievement. Many can't say the same in this thing, yo. 08, got to move to Sunderland, still in the prem. Getting that work. Then a few years later, I became a ranger. And you all saw what you heard. Stints at Reading, South End. Finishing Scotland, St. Mirren. This one about Anton Ferdinand. You know what, gotta come and give it straight to him. 